In this video, I'm going to go over HoneyBook automations. This is part of our larger course, How to Use HoneyBook, to start at the beginning of the playlist if you're new here. Um, otherwise, keep watching to learn about automation specifically. One thing I want to mention as we dive into automations is this is one of the first features, the only other one being scheduler um, that I have covered so far that are not available to the starter plan. We also will cover some of the integration and reports. So those are things that can separate the starter from essentials and premium. I think that everything you really want to do, unless you have a ton of team members, is going to fit in this essentials plan. I also think you can absolutely get started with the starter plan. No problem, especially if you're not quite ready to dive into scheduler and automations quite yet. But if you think something like QuickBooks online integration is going to be important um, and some of those accounting reports and you're planning to rely on HoneyBook for its accounting features, then I would definitely start with the essentials plan. Either way, you get up to 50% off just by using my link or the code Lainey. I'll put my link in the description of this video. With automations, you can basically automate a few tasks and you can do this a little bit with smart files, but in general, those smart files are attached together. So, you know, we have the proposal and then the invoice and then the payment and then the questionnaire. Uh, but what if you don't want to do all of those things at once, but you still want to automate some of your process? That's where automations come in. So to get to this page, you're going to go up to tools and then automations. And then it's going to load all the automations. You can have unlimited automations, which is wonderful. So to start a new automation, you'll click this button and then rename it to whatever you want it to be and then you can start adding actions and they're gonna come in here like a flow chart it's very visual and easy to understand and you can always click on their help articles if needed the different actions that you can do with an automation you can have it send an email create a task send file via email spend smart file via send smart file <laughs> via email or you can move the pipeline stage and again that pipeline stage is just where they are in the process so they could be a lead or they could be in their design stage they could be in production just where whatever pipeline you've set up for your business so we'll act like we're going to send an email and this is where we can create or select any of our existing email templates, which we covered in another video. So let's do this, welcome to the family. And then we'll select when this is going to happen. And you can do that relative to any of these triggers in this dropdown. So relative to when I start the automation, um, relative to the project date or the end date, relative to when the contract is signed, there's a lot of different options here. So like, for instance, if they schedule a session via the scheduler, you can trigger an automation based on that. So there's lots of different options here. And this email won't send if they don't ever schedule a session, for instance, or they don't ever do the first payment or something like that. So this welcome to the family is probably going to happen like after the contract is signed or after the first payment is made. We'll do that. And zero days will be immediate, but you can also do minutes, hours and weeks. So like, I kind of like to just, for emails like this where I want it to feel like I did it personally, I like to just put in kind of a random number <laughs> so they sign the contract and then they, they get this at kind of a time that feels random. It's not 100% immediate, so they don't think it's completely automated. So 42 minutes after the first payment is made, you can also do before if you want. They will send this email saying, welcome to the family. And then we can check to require approval before sending or not, just in case we want to maybe not send this for certain clients or customize the email further or something like that. I'm just gonna click save here. And then if you wanna add additional steps to this, so for instance, after this, maybe I need to create a task for my team to design information or design invitations you know, for this client and we will just set that up for zero days after the previous step is complete. It can basically happen immediately after this email sends and it will create a task for me saying it's time to design invitations for this project. And we'll click save. Just to remind you of the different actions you can do, you can send an email, create a task, send file or smart file via email, and you can also move the pipeline stage. So lots of options. So after welcome to the family, we might select to also move the pipeline stage from, you know, a lead to, you know, we're in the planning stages. So as soon as the contract is signed and the first payment is made, it's going to trigger this email. And then immediately after that, it will trigger 
a task for me to design the invitations and it will move them into that planning stage. Now if we go back into our automations tab, again, that's under tools and automations, you can say when these automations are going to apply to a certain job and it can apply based on a lead form or based on a contact form. So this would basically mean anytime someone fills out a certain lead form or a certain contact form, this automation is automatically added to their job. Can I say the word automatic? <laughs> Enough. I don't know. So whenever someone fills out a contact form that applies to any of these specific project types, then this automation will go onto their job automatically and I don't have to assign it to their job. All the actions will go ahead and start automating. Um, so I selected wedding invites. You can also do default for a certain contact form. So for instance, this is my default contact form. And when I'm in the settings, I can select the project type here. So if I were to go down and select wedding invites, then this form is now officially assigned as wedding invites. And then anytime someone fills out that form, this custom invitation automation would go ahead and apply to their job. And what I've set up here is just sending that welcome to the family immediately after first payment is made. Um, and then five hours after that, I'll send their questionnaire. And then immediately after that, we create the task to sign the invitation. So pretty similar to what we already set up, I just added a form in there. So you can set up an automation for any of your contact form types, as well as for any of your lead forms. And then if you go into your projects, you can manually apply an automation as well. And up here, this is as a reminder that pipeline stage where you can move someone from one stage to another stage after they fill out a form, after they sign the contract, etc. So if I go into Amy and Jake's wedding invitations, I can add an automation here in this gray section that they can't see. And I can just do a quick apply or I can do customize and apply. And so now it's gonna show me the different steps that we have for this automation. And now that it's in this job specifically, if I go to edit or customize it at any point, I'm only customizing it for this job. So as you can see, custom invitation automation, Amy and Jake wedding invitations. So if I wanna change out that email or if I wanna do something a little bit differently, I can do that and it will only apply to Amy and Jake's wedding invitations. It won't apply to the automation as a whole. One thing to note is if you edit an automation template and it's already applied to certain jobs, it will not update on those jobs that it's already applied to. So you might need to go back in and refresh that automation. I think when you combine all the different building blocks of smart files, and then you're able to add in just these really simple actions that you can automate here in HoneyBook. It's really comprehensive and will do pretty much anything that you want it to do. Um, I love this flow chart because I think it just makes it really easy to see. You can move things around. You can um, go in and edit them. You can change the steps really easily. So I think it's um, visually very nice and simple to understand. However, this is kind of a next level thing. So if you don't have your forms created, if you don't have your email templates created, it's going to be a little bit harder to set up the automations because you haven't built out those building blocks yet. So I would definitely recommend um, keeping this in mind as you start building out all of your forms and things and how you can use the automations once you get to that level. And then if you wanna start with like the starter plan, not using automations, get all your forms and smart files built out, and then upgrade to the essentials plan and start using automations, then I think that's a really good option for getting started because this is kind of next level and you kind of got to do some of that setup work before you can fully take advantage of these. In the next section, I'm going to talk about our client portal in HoneyBook.